Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of 5 Minute Gaming News! The show that has a lot of equipment in the background for some reason. We're just work, work, work over here, I guess. Today in the news, have you ever wanted to work in games? No, I mean like, really work in games? If you've ever wondered what the future of gaming holds and often find yourself completely dumbfounded by the ideas some in the industry have, well, prepare to add being horrified as well. NFTs, yes, you should already be cringing, and their proponents continue trying their hardest to force them into the gaming world somehow, despite nearly every single dev, player, and any human being with any sense telling them to stop, well, they continue to insist that NFTs and making gaming a side hustle is the future. And what does that future look like? Well, for the first time, we're actually seeing it in action. Rest of World, a nonprofit journalism organization, recently wrote about the Minecraft-based NFT game called Critters with a Z that in the early days of NFTs enjoyed a good deal of success. Soon enough, those with money were hiring other players to help build their in-game holdings in exchange for some of the profits. One such high roller, according to PC Gamer, who goes by the name Big Chief, had his team, made up mainly of kids in the Philippines, collect building materials for a casino, which he then paid professional Minecraft builders $10,000 to actually create. And while the article goes on to talk about how these young Filipino kids were working for him to run plots of land, which is already insane, eventually the NFT market crashed and it all kind of went belly up. But this idea of having other people work for you was one that stuck around with many NFT enthusiasts like Mikai Kosar of blockchain gaming consultant Wolves DAO who suggests the following. With the cheap labor of a developing country, you could use people in the Philippines as NPCs, real life NPCs in your game. They would just populate the world, maybe do a random job or walk back and forth, fishing, telling stories, a shopkeeper, anything is really possible. And as PC Gamer entirely correctly says, it's an odious idea, perfectly in character for the NFT field and literally the dictionary definition of exploitation. Selfish utilization, especially for profit. It's absolutely Lex Lutherian in its diabolicalness. It is so scummy and absolutely exploiting the pores so that a bunch of rich dudes can walk around in their game and be like, oh, look at this, the NPCs are like people. Crazy, genuinely exactly what you would expect from the NFT Web3 crowd. I am blown away. It's almost like some people have decided that video games are not entertainment, but a way to make money. And if they can make money on it by making other people do the work, well, that's good for them. And I have to know what you think about this. Please, in the comments, I am so blown away. This is even a topic of discussion. Speaking of gaming monetization, Nintendo's Mario Kart Tour has been making a lot of money. In an article over on gamesindustry.biz, they write that Nintendo has announced it's removing its loot boxes from Mario Kart Tour, the mobile version of the popular racing series. Of course, like all mobile games, it had plenty of ways to get your money, and please note yesterday we talked about how more and more game companies are shooting for mobile releases of major IPs like this. And of course, since it's a Mario game, it's pipe-based monetization, but as the article says, Nintendo does disclose the odds of winning the items available through the pipe, with some characters known to be as low as 0.04%. Some characters and carts are also only available for a limited time, but as more and more countries, especially in the EU, determine Determine loot boxes to be children targeted gambling, companies are deciding it's better to just sell things at like $5 a pop for a gold pass than just do loot boxes. But look, I have to say, I think the damage has been done. Since its launch in 2019, Mario Kart Tour has generated an estimated $293 million for Nintendo from in game purchases. That's huge, and it tells a company, hey, this stuff works, so maybe loot boxes might not be the way to go, but what if we come up with some type of currency? Some type of Diablo Immortally orb, or you know, any type of currency monetization thing in all the many games that exist online that you can get for a phone right now. Like we talked about yesterday, companies see the dollar signs in mobile games. They know they can make bank off of those, so now they're bringing on and buying all these companies to create mobile versions of their IP. You know, expect something this weekend at Ubisoft. They're gonna show new games. Expect some mobile titles in there of your favorite classics. The craziest part is I remember back in the old co-optional podcast, TGS podcast days, we would mock the hell out of Konami for doing pachinko machines. 
and how they'd take an IP and they'd make like a Silent Hill pachinko machine. And we were like, what? What are you doing? Maybe they were ahead of the curve. I don't, I, it seems insane now. It was insane then, but I mean, they're making money off of it. So, <laughs> oh, the business world, it is a weird one. But uh, hey, speaking of business world, <laughs> that's terrible. That's a truly terrible segue. Uh, <laughs> We're running a business here, and you can help over on patreon.com slash Jesse Cox, where you can join amazing people like Matthew McComber, Ryan Carter, and Alex. Anyway, that's it for the show. Thanks so much. We'll be back tomorrow with another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News.